I'm Evan, the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from Studio Bell. Once upon a time, there was an ancient instrument that was a box with strings, and people would hold a hammer and strike the strings, and it would make a beautiful tone. Then a musical device called the keyboard came along, and people thought, hey, let's put this keyboard together with this box with strings. But so far, keyboards were only using simple class one levers, so putting the force on this side makes this side stay up until you let go. The problem is, when a hammer hits the string and maintains contact, it sounds like this. So that wasn't going to work. So they kept the class one lever, but they replaced the hammer with a little metal piece called a tangent that maintained contact with the string and still let it ring out albeit very quietly. Then came the harpsichord. For the harpsichord, they kept the class one lever, but attached a piece called a jack to the end. The jack has a little piece sticking out called a plectrum that plucks the string as it moves past. The problem with this is that it always puts the same amount of energy into the string, so it is always the same volume. How could they do it? How could they get an instrument to make the ringing sound of a hammer dulcimer with a single press of a key? Well, in the early 1700s, there was a harpsichord builder working for the Medici family. He started modifying his harpsichords, playing around with the action inside. His name was Bartolomeo Cristofori, the inventor of the piano. And we're going to look at one of his instruments. I can't believe they let me in here. Collections department was nice enough to let me into live room C, one of our recording spaces at Studio Bell. As you can see, there's lots of choice instruments in here. Tanto, we are here to look at this. The Cristofori. There are only three remaining pianos built by Mr. Cristofori, and this is a replica of one of those three. This model of Bartolomeo Cristofori's 1726 piano made in Ann Arbor by David Sutherland, AD 2000. I think another one's in a museum in New York. Probably one in Italy. I'll have to look it up. Yep, one in New York, one in Rome, and one in Leipzig, Germany. This is a replica of the instrument in Leipzig. I'd say upon first looking at it, it's cute. Really, it's reminding me more of the harpsichord we looked at last week than a modern piano. The strings are still vertical. They're still being held by a wooden frame. I have a similar shape of lid being held over the strings, deflecting the sound out. This time I have only one manual or keyboard. On the harpsichord, the black and white keys were reversed, but here we are back to the normal design. Although they are made of wood, they are not coated in ivory, which is fine by me. There's a couple things missing. I don't have any pedals down here. Second, the range of this keyboard is pretty small. I only have four octaves. The harpsichord we looked at last week had more notes than that. Gives me a better view of the tuning pins. I believe these are the dampers, the part that will drop down to stop the vibration of the string. They are also numbered 1 through 49, which tells me there's 49 keys. The rest of the mechanism is hidden inside underneath. Luckily, I have an action model. Here I have a beautiful object called an action model. If we were to saw this Cristofori in half and look inside, this is what we would see. This is a much fancier lever than anything we've seen so far. Really, this is three levers squished together. First, I have a class one lever at the bottom. The fulcrum is here. I push down here. This actually does two things. First, it lifts this bit. This piece will rest against the string so that it does not vibrate unless I press the key. And then when I let go, it stops the vibration again. Secondly, this pushes up a little piece of wood which is connected to this, which is a class three lever. The fulcrum's over here, the load is over here, and my energy is going up in the middle. Then this lever is connected to another class three lever right here, which has the hammer connected to it. So the class one lever pushes up this class three lever, which pushes up this class three lever. And if you remember, class three levers do not lend us strength, but they lend us speed. The most important thing that this lever gives us is with a downward push, the hammer goes up and then drops down a little. It does not maintain contact with the string. It may seem like a small thing that the hammer is going up and then dropping down a little bit, but this is really the key that unlocks the sound of the piano.
Okay, so we all really want to know what this sounds like. So let's create a vibration. If you've watched this series from the beginning, there are no surprises here. We want the strings to vibrate. We are going to interact with the keyboard to make that happen. Low pitch sounds to the left, high pitch sounds to the right. I wonder if anyone's ever invented a keyboard that works the other way. That would be fun to try. Since you saw inside, you know that when I press a key, a hammer will come up and strike the string. So let's hear it. Okay, volume control. A big deal is made out of this instrument's volume control. Cristofori's original name for this instrument was a grave cembalo called piano e fortea, which is literally translated to a keyboard instrument that can play soft and loud. Kind of hit it on the head there, didn't he? So unlike a clavichord that can only play soft and a harpsichord which only has one volume, I can control the volume on this instrument. It is velocity sensitive. So let's hear it, piano. Forte. In modern terms, I'd probably call this a grave cembalo col piano e mezzo forte. I'd say the dynamic range is still pretty small. So the sound of this old piano might not be what you expect. How would you describe the timbre of Cristofori's piano? There's definitely a sharpness to each note. The tip of this hammer is not as soft as a modern piano. It is tipped in leather, which gives it that tapping sound. Remember, Cristofori is modifying a harpsichord shell, so this does feel halfway between the two instruments. To me, the notes feel kind of thin and weak, but again, I have the sound of the modern piano in my head. I can see how it would have been more impressive back in the day. Although I heard Bach was once presented with one of these instruments and his reaction was meh, felt like a toy. It can't yet get as loud as a harpsichord. It took some time for the piano to catch on. Working at the museum so long, I often get the desert island question. You know, if I could only have one instrument for the rest of my life, which one would I pick? And after a while, I usually come to a piano. But this is not the piano I would take with me. How did this instrument continue to evolve? Well, I have a super advanced model right over there, so let's take a look. Here I have a grand piano built by Broadwood and Sons. This was made for the Paris exhibition in 1900. They were really showing off with this piano. Let's hear our soft and loud chords on this instrument. Piano. Forte. I now have 88 keys from a really low to an extremely high. The hammers were perfected over the years playing with the materials and the weight. There was double escapement action where the hammer doesn't drop down all the way, but stays close to the string so you can do rapid notes. To really kick up the volume, I have a lot more strings inside. The lower ones are much thicker. Then they start to double the strings. Then they start to triple the strings. So that's a lot more strings and it's a lot more tension, which is why I now have a piece of steel holding my strings in place. This gives the piano a lot more volume and power. Also have a pedal called sustain. What it does is it lifts up all the dampers so that when I press a key it doesn't go away instantly until I drop the dampers again. I also have a sock pedal which moves all the hammers over so they only hit two of the three strings. Sometimes the soft pedal will just bring the hammers closer to the strings. Similar effect. So this is it, the instrument that I would take to the desert island, perhaps my favorite instrument. So I hope this was an interesting journey to here, the piano. I hope there's one near you that you can try out. I know it's a lot of keys, but remember the pattern repeats. If you want, you can just play the black keys. There's no wrong notes up here. 
or start with a simple song. I remember the other week it was my cousin Nicole that first taught me this. And really I just built from there. Where did this instrument go from here? Well, we'll have to look into that another time. So see you next week, and until then, happy exploring. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.